glad to be back with you. I got a question a couple of days ago from some dynamic students here regarding motion of a block under an external force that was being resisted by a spring, and I thought that would make a pretty good video. So let's look at this problem. We've got an external force that's constant and a block that weighs 100 kilograms here, and we've got this spring here resisting the box's motion this way and a little bit of friction down here. Uh, coefficient of friction of 0.1 is pretty low. Um, and also I need to have a positive sign convention, so I'm assuming X is positive that way. Well, we're going to solve this the way we normally solve this, but start by figuring out what it is we're trying to, to learn. And the problem states, find V when X equals 100 millimeters. Okay, normally you're looking for velocity at, at some point in time with these sorts of problems, but here I want to know the velocity when we're at some displacement. Okay? And that's not very hard. We'll start with uh, Newton's law like we always do. We'll work through it. The only hitch is this force right here, the spring force, is not constant. It's going to change as x changes, where x is the motion of the block. Okay, can even, you know, x goes that way. Right? So this, the uh, governing equation is the one we all know. F equals ma. Right? And before we start plugging in numbers there, let's draw a quick diagram just so we make sure we know what we're doing. When you're solving a problem, if you're not drawing a diagram, if you're not drawing a picture, that may be a mistake. So let's draw all the forces on this. We've got this static force, and I'll just call that F for right now. And I've got my friction force right there between the block and the ground. Okay, I've got a spring force going that way. Now, and I've got MA. Well, MA is actually going to point that way if we want to treat it as a force. Sometimes, and this, this would have happened a lot more in the past than it does now, MA got treated as an inertial force. Well, in the most, in the strictest sense, it's perhaps not really a force, but it has the units of force, and if you treat it like a force, you're going to get the right answer. Okay? Um, so I'm going to write MA, I'm going to call that right now an inertial force, and point it that way. Inertial force goes in the uh, opposite direction of acceleration because mass is really a, uh, a measure, a quantity that describes an object's resistance to acceleration. So there we go. We're going to put that there. Now we're going to sum all the external forces including this one. So let's just go through the list here. Um, there's going to be an external force pointing to the right, okay, so that's positive, minus a friction force, minus a spring force, minus this inertial force, MA, and all those have to be equal to zero. So that's what I'm doing here is I'm summing all the forces, including this MA term, and I'm setting them all equal to zero. If you do it this way, it makes a dynamics problem look just like a statics problem. Some of the forces equal zero. Just one of them happens to be uh, 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 something that looks like a force and arises due to acceleration. So let's see, that's a thousand newtons. Okay, minus, now this is going to be mu n, and, and uh, the normal force here is 981 newtons. And there, equals n. Okay, that's the weight. Okay, so times 0 0.1, I'm going to get 98.1 newtons. And that's just a constant. Notice that that friction doesn't change, so that number doesn't change. All the friction does is just reduce the amount of that external force that's uh, being used to move the block. Well, the spring force is 2000x. Okay, I'm just going to move this over here and call that ma, and it's also m dv dt. Okay, we're going to get to that here in a minute. Okay, well that turns out to be, let's see, it's going to be 901.9 newtons minus 2000 x equals 100 dv dt. Okay, change, dv dt is acceleration. Acceleration is change in velocity divided by change in time. And if I want to clean this up a little bit, I guess I'll divide through and go 9.019 minus 20 x equals dv dt. Okay, that's a pretty useful expression. Right? Now we've got a problem here. We want to know about velocities and we want to know about positions, but that has a time in there. Oh, how am I going to get rid of that? Because I've got one too many kinds of, of terms in this expression here. Well, there's one an easy way to do it now is to remember that th these numbers, this uh, dv divided by dt, that's a number. I mean, that's an infinitesimal number. We don't know what it is, 
so we replace it by dv. That's an infinitesimal number. We don't know what it is, so we replace it by dt. In that sense, we can treat them like variables. Okay. So, let's see. If I know that, uh, let's see, velocity is the change in x with respect to the change in time. Okay. Well, that means that 1 over dt, which is going to over, right there, equals v over dx. Right, and that's just a mathematical manipulation. I'm not sure what this means physically. I know what that means. But I'm pushing variables around just like I do in any other kind of equation. And let me substitute this into here. And what I'm going to get is v dv divided by dx equals 9.019 minus 20 x. Okay, I'll make one more substitution. Make sure I stay in frame. Okay, good. And I'm going to do this. 9.019 minus 20 x times v. Oops, I'm running out of room here. Uh, let me try that one more time. 9.019 minus 20 x v This is the important expression right there. Okay? Now I've got x's on one side and v's on the other side. Now I've got something I can work with. So what I'm going to do here on my little board is I'm going to erase this stuff and I'm going to start working over here again. <coughs> okay? Well, how do you make a dv or a dx go away? You integrate. Let's do that. We can do that. So if I say 9.019 minus 20x dx. I'm going to integrate from 0 because I'm starting at x equals to 0 to whatever x final is. I don't know what it is. I'm just going to put a, a variable in there and I'll plug a number in later. I'm going to throw in a variable wherever you, you, you need a number but you don't have one yet. Okay, same thing here. V final. V D V. Well, that doesn't look too hard, does it? If you've been through about the first, oh, I don't know, month or so of calculus class, you ought to be able to do that. Um, I, I learned this in high school. You guys might have learned it before then. So let's integrate 9.019x minus 10x squared. And that goes from 0 to xf equals 1 half v squared going from 0 to v. Okay, there we go. Now, since there's zeros in the bottom or in the initial point, this is going to be even easier. I get 9.019x final minus 10x final squared equals 1 half v final squared. All right. Now I've got, I'm almost there. If I push a 2 over there and take a square root, I'll have v final equals something. Let's just do that real quick. Let's push the 2 over. Uh, 9.019x final minus 10x final squared equals v final, and that's all in the square root sign. So that's it. And it turns out that if you plug in x final equals 0 0.10 meters. Now remember, we've done all this in uh, newtons and meters and kilograms, so I'm going to leave this in terms of meters. If I put in 100 millimeters, I'm going to get the wrong answer. In fact, I'm going to get a complex answer for reasons I'll have to explain later. Um, I'm going to get v final equals 1.2, let's make sure I get the right answer here, 1.266 meters per second. So there you go, guys. This is how to do this problem, and this is how you do a whole class of problems that act the same way. I hope this helps. hope you get uh, all A's on your exams.